Shalom, welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Dalmar, and together with Mark Ronich of jbiztechvalley.com, and also statewide news, we have a very, very guest, special guest with us, Tom Klingen, who is the Albany County City Clerk. Tom, welcome to the Jewish No city in that, only oh, Albany only County, County Clerk. Yeah, you're right. right. Well, I'm glad to be here representing Albany County. Thank you, Rabbi. Good. You know, listen, first question I would like to say, what is the job a job description of a clerk. Clerk sounds like a scribe or somebody you taking down notes. What is the job that we have here? Very true. In fact, the word actually goes back to the same root word as cleric, uh, because in the medieval times, it really were only the religious people who knew how to read and write and could take down the records and keep Very the records of, uh, sort of sure. That. And uh, the job of county clerk in our state since the 1820s has been an elected position. Before that, it was appointed. Um, city clerks are not, but most town clerks are. Um, the elected. ones most big, town clerks are elected. That's right. But city clerks are not. city clerks are appointed. I'm sorry, I should have been more clear. That's okay. Um, the uh, the single biggest thing that I say to people about the county clerk's office is we're not the place to go for birth, death, or marriage records. In our state, those belong with the town clerks and the city clerks. We do, however, have divorce records for the simple reason that we are the clerk of the courts that handle divorces. So county clerks do have that particular record, but not the other two. Generally, most county clerks have two major responsibilities. The first is for land records, and that would be for all of the deeds and mortgages on real property within the county and anything that relates to that and goes along with it. Second big group of uh, records are court records for two of the four courts at the county level, and those would be county court, which deals with criminal matters, and state supreme court, which is really, despite the name, the lowest trial level civil court. So that's where corporations go with matters uh, to uh, litigate, um, insurance matters are litigated there, and also, as I say, divorces. So we do end up with those records. The other two courts, just by way of explanation that I don't oversee the records of, are family court, which deals with juvenile matters, and the uh, surrogate court, which deals with trust and estates. So the other records, uh, more than half of the court records, are also my responsibility. Interestingly enough, a lot of county clerks in our state have motor vehicle responsibilities. Um, but that's not the case of my county or the uh, county around Syracuse and a lot of the downstate counties. For some reason, the state took over those functions many years ago. I've never really found out why, but uh, frankly, I don't miss that part of the job. <laughs> because I, I was going to ask Probably you, more trouble than it's worth. But you, you see Frank Marola, the Rensselaer County clerk, yes. on TV all the time. Yes. You know, is talking about, you know, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that. You know, the state's imposing this, the state's imposing that. And I'm just wondering why, I was always wondering why they never came to you in Albany County, but now I have the answer. Because right, but the other surrounding counties, Saratoga and Schenectady yeah. and Green, for example, they all have uh, motor vehicle responsibilities. And, and Kathy uh, Marchion used that as a catapult, the county clerk position, to become a state senator. She did. <laughs> and and Frank Frank's office performs a lot of positive things in addition to the things he won't do. That's right. So we <laughs> shouldn't uh, malign and Frank no, absolutely. only no. citing the times when he said he's not going to do one thing or another. The single biggest thing, though, that I think most people would be interested in knowing about the county clerk's office is that it's self-supporting, which is highly unusual in government. Uh, last year, for example, we took in over $33 million gross, I'll call that, through our office, most of which went to the state of New York and even to cities and towns and villages and such unusual um, recipients of, of our finances as the Capital District Transportation Authority and the state of New York Mortgage Agency. How do you get that money? The fees that people pay for various transactions when they come in, when especially transactions relating to mm -hmm. real property transfers right. or mortgages, um, are collected in our office and then dispersed. And there are also a large number of fees that are involved with the court system whenever one initiates a court case or makes a motion in a court case right. or a lot of other different fees that are collected at various points during the court proceeding. We are the bankers, if you will, for the court system in addition to their record keepers. But last year, I'm very proud of the fact that we uh, were able to collect just about three and a half million dollars for the county, of county share out of that $33 million, we got to keep 
about ten um, percent, roughly about ten percent, and that that amount of money not only paid for all of the operation of the county clerk's office and the hall of records, including all of the the debt service and the fringe benefits and so on that go with it, but in addition to that, we turned back about five hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of surplus, if you want to call it that, more than what it cost to operate or operate our office, went back to help lower uh, property taxes. It went back to help subsidize the other operations of county government. And most people have no clue right. that we have yeah. that big a financial role. Because you see there's so much government, that's really the word today, is the United States government's in debt, and Detroit's in debt, and the state is always a billion dollars in debt. And here it's refreshing to hear some Government agencies make a little bit of money over here. They're we not do. such an incredible now, debt. Now I'm going to ask a pesky question, but sure. couldn't you have used the 500000 for your office and given raises or hired more people or done something? Well, <laughs> and it's I'm a, sure <laughs> we could always find things that we could do to spend more money, but frankly, in my 25 years, I've always been more interested in finding new ways to save money than new ways to spend it. We're not uh, shorting ourselves on the things that we need, but I will point out to you that... Uh, when it comes to raises for the employees, really the county legislature are the people who set that right. theme and that policy. And that decision that they make has to cover all of the county's employees, including you know the nursing home and the county social services department and health and mental health and public works and all the other things that the county does that are very good and deserving, but are not able to bring in enough money to support themselves. And that's why, frankly, despite our making money, my people had not had a raise in about four years. But we got a break finally in that long drought, and in just the last couple of months, uh, the county has finally given about a 2% raise out to our people. And this is a wonderful thing and a long time coming. So, and how, what's your salary? Mm -hmm. The county clerk in Albany County makes about $100,000 a year. Um, this position is obviously up for election this year since I'm not running, and there are two people, one from each of the major parties who are seeking that election mm -hmm. in uh, early November. Mm -hmm. And since you're a Democrat, I presume you're supporting the Democratic candidate. I am supporting the Democratic candidate. I even I would even come out with his name, but I no. don't know if we have ground rules yeah, here about that. Yeah, we have that. ground rules. Yeah, that's okay. But I just wanted to. Uh, do you have any regrets? Or, and do you have you you know you made the announcement I guess in March or April? Do you, have you been walking around the county clerk's office? and the Hall of Records and talking and saying, gee, I'm going to miss this. Oh, I'm undoubtedly yeah. going to miss this. This is a wonderful job. Uh, in fact, I used to make jokes that more people should run for it, but not the year that I'm running. <laughs> um, it really is, I, I think the single best thing about it is there's a chance there to help someone with a problem every day whether it's something that comes up over the telephone or it's someone writing to you with a, a problem that they've got. Um, there really is a, a tremendous sense of satisfaction in that. And when I worked previously in the county executive's office, you really were dealing with one crisis after another and you didn't see many things through to fruition. And this is a nice break from that and a nice chance to, to do that and help people. It seems that on the campaign, you seem to be the Teflon Tom, if you would, about, you know, where you really have had some tough campaigns, but you've always won by uh, handily. You've always won by a large margin, as far as I could tell. Well, I'd like to say that's all due to my good hard work and my uh, good reputation, as you've cited, but yeah. the truth is this is still a very democratic county, and that has certainly helped. Um, an interesting fact is that in the years that are odd years, like 2013, um, you don't see a lot of the people who come out to vote who are enticed to come out and go to the polls when there's a governor's race or there's a presidential mm -hmm. race. Um, and so you get kind of a fall off and you get really just the people who really have an interest in those local races or whose dedication to voting is so strong. And to me, that includes Albany's substantial Jewish community, which has always been very involved in um, civic activities. And uh, in those wards, for example, where there's a large Jewish population, you see it in the, in the turnout much more so than in some of the other areas you know, what of the, the city. The reason is because I think it's from out of frustration that Jewish people are always second-class citizens in Europe. They were never able to really participate in government. So they so thankful when they came to the United States that, you know, all men are created equal. Everybody has an equal vote. So they just so enthralled. Listen, you know, you really want to hear what I have to say. So it's like a privilege, not like, oh, what do you bother me to go to vote. It's, you know, like I always vote and my parents, I'm going to say it's a very Jewish idea where 
you have to vote. You know, like mm-hmm. from our grandparents didn't get to vote. No one in the Tsar could care less about you, you know, in Russia and, and in all these European countries. And here you have such an opportunity. I know one of my children didn't vote, and my, my wife gave him over the head. Mm-hmm. You didn't vote. He said, well, it would make a difference. You know, which unfortunately is most people. I say that unfortunately because, you know, I think this participatory democracy and people should participate. And she gave him over the head. You know, you came here in the United States. You should be privileged to be here. And you, you get out there and you vote over here. I don't want to hear you that you don't vote again. So I'm just, I think that's where, I mean, you're asking, saying about the Jewish community, mm-hmm. they do. I mean, it's even the national elections that they know the Jewish vote is, you know, Jewish people vote more than in numbers and percentages more than the population. And we're in the same cycle where this is kind of a quiet year where in the city of Albany, for example, a lot of attention was paid to the primary races mm-hmm. that were there. But often in those races, there is no candidate from the opposing major party, so a lot of people feel that it's not necessary to vote. And I'm, I'm glad to hear you uh, remind me that there is such a strong uh, feeling in this community that voting is important. And even though in November, uh, many of the candidates that will be on the ballot will be people who don't even have opposition, it's still very important to get out and exercise mm-hmm. that right to vote. Because so many people have fought and died for our right to vote in this country, and we need to be respectful of that. And I'm glad to hear you speak so strongly about it, just from your own family's experience. Right. Mm-hmm. And I've never missed a vote, uh, an election day vote, and uh, I make it a point to to vote early, and then if I have to go down to New York City to cover yeah, something, I go down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> vote Only early, once. vote often. <laughs> huh? Once to a customer. Now. I wanted to uh, ask you, following up with the campaigns, looking back, you've run, what, five times now? I'm actually finishing up my sixth term of office. Right, so you ran so you ran six times. Six, okay. six times. Uh-huh. Which was your, who was your toughest opponent on the Republican you know, side? You know, when which... you uh, run for office, uh, there are almost certain rules that are out there, one of which is that when the office first vacates, that seems to be the time when the strongest challenger will step up, especially yeah. in a situation like ours, where one party has been the dominant party. Because if there is a chance to, to win, if there's a chance to beat the uh, the majority party or so the, an open the, seat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the time, and I think that very first election in '89 um, was one where I had a, a very strong opponent. But so many of my opponents came out of the strongest Republican organization, which was the town of Colony. And there's been such a massive change now in in Colony um, mm-hmm. with a Democratic supervisor who's won re-election against some serious opposition several times. Every that's every two years. And the whole board is four. Democratic. And the whole board yeah. is democratic. So a lot of that has changed. In 1997, I had not one but two opponents. I had a, a write-in or a min- minor party opponent as well as a Republican opponent. And that was a bit of a stretch because a three-way race is very different in its characteristics from a two-way race. But those would be the two that would stand out uh, in my experience. And one of them, I remember, was really vicious because they had TV commercials mocking you and mocking your last name. Well, you know, it, it's funny because... Because, um, you know, Star Trek, Klingon, Klingon, and they had someone dressed up. And this was someone a, whose own last name could be made fun of, too, you know? Um, I've never had television commercials, so I've never had the opportunity to, uh, to do that, but I've always felt that, um, that, in general, the voting public would much rather hear positive things right. about you and your own uh, criteria, your own credentials and what you want to do in the office than the negative. But the negative stuff does sell, and in a close race it can make a critical difference. But uh, fortunately for me, I've had uh, uh, the luxury of having races that ended up uh, very well from my perspective, and I have not had to, to get into a lot of uh, uh, arguing and, and uh, difficulties and, and negativity in uh, advertising, and, and I'm glad of that. And if mm-hmm. people remember that about me in my time in office, so much the better. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. How would you like to be remembered? Um, it's a difficult question. Uh, the, the thing that stands out for me about the last 25 years is how much 
computers and online access have made a difference. And I think anybody would say that about these recent decades. And so we've taken uh, information that you used to have to go to the county clerk's office to get, like deeds and mortgages, for example. And you can now do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week from the privacy of your home. You just go to the county's website, which is albanycounty.com, and you look for deeds and mortgages online, and you can see any deed or any mortgage for any property in the county for the last 33 years. And there's not even a charge for that. Some counties have, you, you sign up and then you give them your credit card and so on and you pay for it that way. Um, but we felt that giving it away for free, uh, allowing people to have that kind of access and not charging for them, then they're not coming in the office. They're not uh, requiring uh, parking from us or the use of the building. We don't have to have as large a space. And that's, that's worked out very well. And you had some challenges with moving. You had to move to North Russell Road, and then you had to move back yeah. to the county courthouse. And you but we are back now in back, the county courthouse yeah. after five and a half years out in Westgate Comfortable. In, in exile. In the same spot that we were in before, mm -hmm. and the building really is beautiful. And I would say to um, the people out there, the people who own that building, come on down and have a look at what your tax dollars have is done. So 162 Washington? No, actually, it's the county courthouse, which is at the corner of Eagle Street in Columbia in uh, downtown Albany. Next to the Court of Appeals building. It's next to the Court of Appeals building. It's two doors down from City Hall, and uh, it is across the street from Academy Park, which is where the school district is headquartered. So it's kind of a whole mm -hmm. local government complex that's uh, right in there. But uh, a beautiful old building. You do have to go through a metal detector to get in. You have to actually come in on the opposite end of the building from us and come up two flights to see us. But we're certainly glad for the customers, and we appreciate uh, they're being there because uh, this really is for us what we do every day. And if people didn't need to come and look at our records, the county wouldn't need us and we wouldn't have jobs. Well, I so. thank you for making it free access online because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm against these fees that the government charges and tolls and all that stuff. In fact, I drive down to New York with a Taconic just to avoid the throughway. And but I will point out to you, Mark, <laughs> that if we didn't have the fee income that we have in the clerk's office, I wouldn't have been able to say to you that the office is self-supporting right. and doesn't require anything from the tax. Right. I meant the online access is yes. free, and I appreciate that, and I want to thank you for that from a personal standpoint. Not that I've used the county clerk's office very much, but just in theory. <laughs> Another thing I that. want to touch on that's a major function of my office is actually something that is unique in New York State government, and that is... We have a program called the Albany County Hall of Records. It is located at 95 Tivoli Street here in the city of Albany. It's in the north end of town. Um, it's actually, for those of us who've been around Albany for a while, it is in the place that the Huck Finns Warehouse used to be in before they moved to their current location. Mm -hmm. So this building was built for us in the year 2000. It is uh, still, in my mind, a very new building. It holds about 100,000 cubic feet of city and county records, and that's the unique part. We are both a city agency and a county agency when it comes to the management of records. And, and I'll tell you, your office was very helpful when I was going back and, review and trying to find the uh, records regarding the uh, Jewish, uh, the history of, Jew of Orthodox Judaism in Albany. And you had, the, your office had phenomenal amounts of data uh, regarding who, homes that were bought and, you know, property that was there and, you know, going back uh, over 100 years. I mean, into, you know, there was a wave of Jews that came in in the 1880s and then the 1890s and 1900s, 1910. And you have records that go back. In, in fact, our oldest records go back to the Dutch colonial times. Right. And we just last year did a project to preserve for future generations all of those oldest Dutch records, which truly are in Dutch and because they, were, they predated even the English takeover in 1664. And that was when we were called Fort Orange. Yes. Albany was called Fort Orange. You have records from that, from that we do. day. Now, Osser Levy was the first homeowner in Albany. He came up here, mm -hmm. not a homeowner, but he owned property. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to have a minion uh, here in Albany. He was a trader up and down the Hudson. And Peter Stuyvesant was kicking the Jews out of New York City. And he came up to Albany and he set up, he bought some property and set up a minion in the 1600s. I mean, I mean. But then, you know, that there was a big gap between when Orthodox Judaism really started, yeah. 
So that's and Mark that. is already the I'm a historian, historian yeah. of uh, the Capital District. Over there. And, and we Delaware. have many people who come to us for that same reason. They want to see the older records either of properties. Uh, and For example, with the city records under our roof, we've got building plans for uh, many of the structures within the city. If you were doing some research on an older temple, for example, you're going to be able to come to see us and look at that. We've got some fascinating photographs of Albany in the old days that we're gradually rolling out and getting where more people can see them. But uh, Would the, you scan them in and put them online? We have gotten them in digital form. We're trying to figure out exactly how to put them out there for the public to look at. They were taken, most of the ones that I'm talking about now, were taken in the 1930s and 40s by the city engineer's office, and they tended to be of streets and, and things that dealt with repaving and public works projects. We think mostly in conjunction with the uh, whole Depression era public works movement to put people to work. But you get a lot of streetscapes in there. You get a lot of people's homes that you can see in the background. And it's fascinating for people who are interested in old yeah, Albany. Yeah, because Pearl which, Street in the 1930s and 40s was all was, Jewish. That was owned. where all of the uh, commerce went on in and, uh, and our that's, central city. And the Jewish owned butchers and the tailors. But if you get a property, you can go back. That's yeah. how it works back. I mean, you say, here's a piece of property, and look back 100, 200 years, who were the, who were the owners? Typically, the deed them. will give you a lot of the clues to that, because each deed is built on the owner at present, and the deed will recite for you who the previous owner was. Now, you may have to go back and look several deeds back to try and build that mm -hmm. chain of who owned the house over what period of time, because there isn't one consolidated list of who those owners were. But if you know, for example, that the house was built around 1920, uh, and you have the street address, the city building records that are within our custody at the Hall of Records might uh, yield a copy of those building plans and some information about the structure when it was first put up. So, for example, I found out that there was an, a synagogue at 66 Bassett Street, which doesn't exist, mm -hmm. and, and Bassett exists, but not 66. Uh, and there was uh, where the Times Union Center is there on Pearl Street, you had a synagogue also. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, it's fascinating. I'd love to, if you had pictures of these that would, these structures, that would have been phenomenal. Yeah, again, but, you know, we love to have volunteers come down yeah. there and help us to identify what the different structures are. Okay. The other big function of the Hall of Records, though, and the one that is kind of the hidden function is we take all of the inactive records out of the county and city offices where they take up space that could be better used for people. And we move them to an inactive storage facility at 95 Tivoli Street, part of our Hall of Records, that also um, is very well attuned to records management so that when a set of records comes in and has been there for a while and it reaches its life expectancy, we then destroy it. We do it, of course, in conjunction with the people who own the records, whatever county or city mm -hmm. department it is, and we get their sign-off on it. But an important function of keeping records, if you think about it, is getting rid of the ones that you don't need any longer, mm -hmm. or you won't have room for the ones that you do need, and you won't be able to find them. And that's a very important function we serve there as well. Now, you mentioned to me at one time that there's this mail scam going on yes. about deeds and costing. Could you tell sure. me? Sure. Uh, and I think that's important for our viewers to learn about. As I said to you, if you need a copy of your deed and you own property within Albany County and you bought the place within the last 33 years, that deed is online and very easily accessible to you under the name of the buyer. However, if uh, you needed a certified copy, you would have to come to us. If it was more than 33 years, you would have to come to the clerk's office. But most people already have the deed to their home because they got the deed back after it was recorded in our office when you first purchased the place. There are, unfortunately, some unscrupulous people who have been writing, especially, I think, to our older residents who own property, and saying to them, you know, you really should be able to put your hands on that deed instantly, and for just $100, we'll get you a copy of your deed. Well, then they go online, and they get it for free, and they sell it to you for $100. That's really not a very good bargain, in, in my view. So they're a little alarmist in how they approach it. The solicitations kind of look like they might be a government records organization telling you that your um, deed is available if you'll only send them, you know, one charge is 89, one charge is 59. Mm -hmm. um, but this deed copy scam, as we refer to it, is a very pernicious thing because it preys on people who are not sure that they've got that copy around and who may not know that you can get it either from our office if you want 
or you can go online any time of the day or night, print a copy out right there, and know that you've got it and, uh, ready at your fingertips. Well, thank you for the warning. I appreciate that. because Well, I uh, think publicity about this is the best way to fight this particular scam. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for reminding me yeah. that I wanted to speak about that today. I wanted to ask you, uh, what do you want people to know about you that they might not know about? About me? Yeah, well, personally. you know, Mark, I'm going to be retired soon. Um, I'm hoping to enjoy life more, uh, maybe to do a little traveling. Um, so this really is not about me. Um, I really would like people to know that uh, we've tried to do the best job with their um, resources that the county has, with the folks that the county has given me to work with who are wonderful workers. I've been very blessed with the staff and the supervisors, both at the Hall of Records and at the clerk's office. Um, we've got a good crew of people, and our goal is to turn over to the next county clerk um, one of the best running operations of a county clerk's office in the state of New York. And if that's my mm -hmm. legacy, right. that will sit fine with me, Mark. So tell you, and I ask this about everyone, uh, how old are you? I'm 62 this year. 62. Old enough okay. to apply for Social Security. All right, Mazel yeah. Tov. May you live to be 120, there as you they go. say. That's a Jewish, uh, uh, that's a Jewish view. That's of right. <laughs> uh, and you're married? Yes. And how many children? We have four daughters who are all grown and all moved out of the house, so we're empty nesters now. There's just uh, Carol and I in this big empty house. And you're in Cohoes? Yes, we've lived in Cohoes so all of our married life. Wow. And you went to University of Albany? Yes, as a student at UAlbany, as was Carol, and we were both, we got a very good education there. Um, we both actually got our master's degrees there as well. She went into library science. I got mine at the, uh, what is now the Rockefeller College and went into public administration. A wonderful background, really, to have that degree in public administration and my undergraduate degree in history, because I think I really found the right spot where and, both of them can pay off. And Tom and I have a common, uh, a, a common area at the University at Albany is the radio station. And, uh, we both were involved with what was called WSUA in those days, right. was the campus radio station. For State University, Albany, SUA, but they, um, you know, but it was located downtown campus in the basement. And Tom was, uh, what, what did you do? You were, I was involved with the financing side of it because most of the work that I did on the campus with the media was actually at the newspaper. Uh -huh. I was the editor-in-chief of the Albany Student Press, which is the newspaper <laughs> that uh, is still published at the university yeah. now. So you have, so and your degrees were, and so you have a master's, and did finance was a big part of your degree component? Or? Yeah, and when you take the master's degree program at public administration, you learn a lot more about government finance. And when I first came to work for the county executive's office, uh, one of my first responsibilities was budget director for the county. So that was under Jim Coyne? Yeah, served okay. for three years as budget director, and then for 10 as assistant county exec uh, before I became our county clerk for the last 25 years almost. So was your whole uh, tenure with the county executive all with Jim Coyne? Yes, yes okay. it was. Um, and uh, a lot of uh, what's happened after I left um, was sadly very regrettable. Um, but um, the early parts of that administration accomplished a lot of positive things for mm -hmm. Albany County. And um, it's a shame in some respects that the uh, last few years of it were highly negative, mm -hmm. but um, there were so many good things that were done and are done to this day by county government that I wouldn't want people to dwell right. on that. No, I'd want true. them to uh, look ahead to all the good things that county government has done for people and mm -hmm. continues to do. And I wanted to um, ask you, are you by tradition or by nature uh, a fastidious person where you, know, you really focus in? Because I would think that the clerk's office have to focus in and hone in on some real minor details. Somebody in, in one of the stories when I first made the announcement that it wasn't going to run again said that I, I brought an accountant's attention to something. Mm -hmm. I, I really haven't had an accounting background. Right. And I think to some people um, being compared to an accountant might be an insult. But I no, always saw but, that as a yeah. positive, mm -hmm. you know, very concerned about uh, making sure that the money is properly spent and um, but fastidious, also trying to but make sure. fastidious, that would that fit you? I got to tell you, the word that I like the best is careful. careful. I like to think that I'm okay. careful in the things that I do. I know that's probably not everybody's favorite adjective, but I think when you're in this responsibility to be careful with what you do every day, both in how you treat people, the customers, and the people that work for you, and careful in, in how you um, keep the records, that's a very positive attribute to have when you're a county clerk. So do you like baseball? 
I've well, been known sport? to watch baseball. Well, what uh, sport do you like the best? I probably, uh, owing to my wife's influence, it's probably tennis. I probably tennis. watch more tennis than anything okay. else. Um, and that's uh, because she has an interest in the game and she has a, a relative who was a professional ball uh, tennis player um, uh, and uh, did very well. He's a coach now. So mm -hmm. she likes to watch him and watch the people that he's coaching. Okay. And she's gotten me interested too. <laughs> can't say as I play the game, but I watch it. I'm hard that we're out of time, yes. but it was very, very interesting. And even though you're retired, I'm sure you're going to be doing good things. And, you know, with experience, that you have so much uh, good experience in doing what you have to do, I'm sure you'll put it to good use Give somewhere. Give a blessing. Yeah, blessing. <laughs> they should keep on doing some positive things for the community. And like we said, should live till 120 years with a lot of good health. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Tom Klingon, for being on the Jewish Food and for your good service to the county throughout all these years. I'm proud to have you on. Thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you both.